Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. All right, say Galatians 5, 22 and 23 with me. What are the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit. Today, it's patience. Are you a patient person? With every fruit, I've been asking you guys, what does that mean? What does the word patience mean? What does it mean to be patient? To have patience? Especially if it's a fruit of the Spirit. Now, I used to struggle. I would be very impatient. I didn't like to wait. I'd get frustrated like oh can't we go isn't it done yet why do I have to wait I wasn't very patient if something started to frustrate me ooh, I let the whole world know I couldn't wait very well patience grab your Bible I want us to read a few verses in the New Testament a few verses of the New Testament, we're going to go to the book of Colossians. And Colossians is this really little book. It's a letter that Paul wrote to a church in Colossal. And it is easiest to find, well, I guess we could go either way. Let's go from the Gospels. Let's go from the Gospels. So if we start at the new beginning of the New Testament with the Gospels, we get past Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, then Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Okay, so the church in Colossae is who he's writing to here. And we're going to jump into a few of the words in his letter because he's telling them that he's been praying for these people. Right, Paul, he loves the people who live there. He's been praying for them. And we're going to jump in at verse 9. At verse 9, all right? Because the church here has been learning about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is living in their hearts. And they're experiencing the fruit of the Spirit. And how Jesus changes our lives, right? You can't have an encounter with Jesus and not be changed. And that's what's happening to these people. So in verse 9 here, it's this is what Paul says. If you need a little more time to find it, press pause. But here we are in Colossians 1, 9. So Paul says, Since the day we heard this about you, we have continued praying for you. We ask God that you'll know fully what God wants. We pray that you will have great wisdom and understanding in spiritual things. Then you will live the kind of life that honors and pleases the Lord in every way. You will produce fruit in every good work and grow in the knowledge of God. Then God will strengthen you with his own great power and you will not give up when troubles come, but you will be patient, patient. So here he says, we're going to produce fruit. You will produce fruit in every good work and grow in the knowledge of God. Remember how Jesus talked about how he goes, the vine and the branches just stay connected to me. And we talked about it like an apple tree, right? We talked about how if a branch breaks off, what did he say? It might as well just go in the bonfire, use it for a s'mores roasting stick. It can't grow anything. It's when we're connected to the trunk of the tree, the roots of the tree. It's when we're connected to Jesus that we produce fruit. And that's what he says here. Because you're experiencing the spirit living in your heart, because you are connected to Jesus, you are producing fruit and God is strengthening you and you will not give up. When troubles come, you will be patient. Oh, is it easy to give up when troubles come? I was thinking about all these Bible characters, all these Bible stories of people who had to be patient. Can you think of someone who had to be patient? I was thinking about Noah. Did Noah have to be patient? How long did it take to build that ark? It took a long time. And then... He finally, they get in the ark and they hope that there's going to be rain. 
Then how long did it storm? 40 days and 40 nights. Did they have to be patient through all that? Do you think the animals were quiet that entire time? No, I think it was probably noisy and smelly and chaotic. And then the storm ended, but then were they still stuck in the ark waiting for the water to go away and he released the birds? Did Noah have to be patient? Even when there were troubles, Noah did not give up. He had the patience of Jesus inside of him, right? The fruit of the Spirit, patience. What about Abraham and Sarah? Did they have to be patient? God gave them a promise. He said, you guys are going to have descendants like stars in the sky. And that seems so crazy to Sarah that she laughed. She goes, we're old. You're crazy. They had been patient for so long that they had given up, right? They had given up ever thinking that they would have a kid, a baby. And so then they decided to kind of do things their way. And then there was Hagar and Ishmael. And when we try and do things our way, does trouble come? Yeah, but God works with it. God goes, all right. That wasn't my original plan, but I'll work with it. And then out of that came Isaac and Abraham and Sarah had Isaac. And so they didn't demonstrate as much patience as they could have, but God still worked with it. Because what does it say here? God will strengthen you with his great power. Even when we're not the most patient or we try and do things our own way. I was thinking about Joseph. I love the story of Joseph. But he got sold into slavery. And then he does everything right in Potiphar's household. But then he gets caught up in drama. And he ends up in prison. And did he have to be patient in prison? Did he have to go, God, do you hear me? Do you even care what I'm going through? Like, this is really hard. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. He was like, but I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust that God has a plan for me here. And he had to be patient. He had to go through some really hard stuff, didn't he? But he was patient. He said, I am going to rely on God's power and strength. I will not give up when troubles come. I'm going to be patient. And then we know what Joseph did, right? He interpreted those dreams. He becomes the second in command in Egypt. He saves them from famine. He reunites with his family. He shows amazing forgiveness. And that's because he had the fruit of the Spirit. He had patience. You know, all through the Old Testament, we saw patience with people waiting for the Messiah waiting for the Messiah. And they tried to take things into their own control again. They said, give us a king. Even though God was like, aren't I enough? And they had King Saul and King David and King Solomon, all these things. And then eventually they broke apart and they're going, are we ever going to be rescued? And they had to be patient. God goes, hey, my plan since the beginning has been to save you, but don't give up when troubles come. It's my power. It's my strength that's going to do great things. And then Jesus comes. And Jesus comes. Were there times when the disciples had to be patient? Were there times when Jesus had to be patient with the disciples? Yeah, sometimes those disciples were irritating. Sometimes I bet Jesus just wanted to shake them by the shoulders and be like, you guys, would you just grow up? But there was patience. And you know, I want us to turn to another verse because I think we are having to go through some of the ultimate patience. All right, we're going to flip forward from Colossians. We're going to go forward. We're going to find the book of James. So we go through Colossians. We go through 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, and then we get to the book of James. And we want James chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 7 and 8 together. James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Here's what it says. It says, brothers and sisters, be patient until the Lord comes again. A farmer is patient. He waits for his valuable crop to grow from the earth. He waits patiently for it to receive the first rain and the last rain. You too must be patient. Do not give up hope. The Lord is coming soon. Have we been waiting and waiting? 
waiting and waiting going Jesus are you ever gonna come back again we have to be patient right here he describes it like farmers right think about all of the farmers maybe you have farmers in your family the farmers in your church were surrounded by farming in the Dakotas think about that we plant the seed and then you wait and then you wait and then you wait and then eventually it comes up and then you wait and then you wait and then you wait and then you hope that it rains and you wait and you wait and you wait patience knowing that the harvest is coming here it's saying the Lord is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Be patient. Be patient through the troubles. Don't give up when the hard stuff comes. The Lord is coming soon. And so one last verse that we got to read together in is, is in Revelation. So very last book of the Bible. We're flipping to the end. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. This is the last verse wrapping up kind of part of the three angels message. And in Revelation 14, 12, it's talking about, right, getting ready for Jesus to come again. And it says, this means that God's holy people must be patient. They must obey God's commands and keep their faith in Jesus. Keep looking to Jesus. And then the fruit of the Spirit in our hearts, it's going to pour out. And we're going to have that patience through the tough times, through the troubles, through the hard stuff. We're going to keep our eyes on Jesus saying, hey, I'm going to be patient. I know Jesus is coming again. And because I have the fruit of the spirit of patience inside of me, I know that no matter what happens, I can trust God's timing, God's calendar, God's clock, God's everything we're going to trust it. I have patience. I have faith in that. We can do this together because we have the fruit of the Spirit. Let's bow our heads and wrap up. Dear Jesus, we are so thankful that you are coming again. We go through troubles. We go through hard stuff. But we know that we have the fruit of the Spirit. We are patient and we're waiting for you to come. And so we're so thankful for the ways that you work in our lives. And even when we do things where you're like, ah, you're kind of doing things the way that's not how I would have wanted it. It's all right because you are patient with us and you work your plans to save and to love. And we can then have that patience flow through us as well. And we're just thankful for that. Just help us to see that patience in our lives today. And we thank you for your love in your name. Amen. All right patience it's a pair right it even starts with the letter p so we're going to color in our pair for patience decorate it all up and then on the back on the back let's write about patience write about some times in the maybe there's other bible stories you can think of i just named a few what other bible stories have patience in them what can we learn from them? Are there maybe a favorite Bible verse that we read here that you can write down and help memorize? Maybe there's a prayer you want to write. Or maybe you even just want to think about what are some ways maybe that God can, can help me be more patient. All right, so reflect on patience and I will see you tomorrow.